beautiful dancer. And Lord Chaitanya also. Lord Chaitanya was the most magnificent dancer the world has ever seen. Uh, and uh, historical accounts of his dancing at the Rathiatra festival and, and other places are just astonishing, just astounding. Uh, he was completely uninhibited dancer. He would jump high in the air, his limbs f f wheeling in every direction. And, oh, it's just impossible to describe. So Lord Chaitanya also uh, should be portrayed not just in any pose. Uh, the, I find the poses in the, in the Krishna and Lord Chaitanya paintings to be very dry. Uh, it's like they got somebody, some, somebody they knew to model for them. You know, and, and of course, how long can you hold a dynamic pose when you're a model? So, uh, you know, it would be far better to, to, to find someone of uh, a similar physiology and, and uh, maybe take a video of them dancing and find a really dynamic pose when, they're, when they look very, very attractive and then just take that frame and use that as your, uh, as your model. Krishna always has black hair, no gold hair? Krishna always has black hair. Who has golden hair? Um, Kapila, his incarnation, Kapila. But that's rare. Most of the time his hair is black. Krishna means black. Yeah, Krishna means blackish. Right. Keep trying to visualize these proportions. Remember we did a 3D model? We did. Yeah. I, I'll post that. So it's kind of a reference to how to visualize the arms because remember we stretched them? Yeah, we had to stretch his arms to make them reach his knees. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'll post that. So there are, um, there's a description of the proportions of Krishna's body somewhere. I'm going to try to find it. I'm going to try to dig it up. Because, for example, when they sculpt deities in India, they use a special set of proportions um, for Krishna's body. I think it might be in Shilpa Shastra. I'm going to try to find that out. Oh, that's what I need. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Give me some numbers, right? <laughs> okay. Any other questions on anything? Well, I have a question. Florian has a question. Yeah, because... Um, we, we spoke about the material world and that our universe resembles the material world because the term universe is not directly attributed to, um, to the Bumandala system, which we right. actually think as of universe when we speak of the Vedas. Yeah. So, and it is mentioned that Shiva is um, in every universe. Every universe is Shiva and Brahma, and so on. Mm -hmm. So when the material world is the universe, and Shiva is in charge of the, of the universal destruction, wouldn't it be actually many Shivas that yeah. are in charge of destruction, and not only one Shiva? Shiva expands ah, okay. into many Rudras, and there are many Rudras within each universe. Shiva actually lives in the interim area between the material and spiritual worlds. Uh, so uh, the original Shiva or Sara Shiva stays there in the, in the uh, what's it called, Tatasta Shakti area. But then when the universes are created, he expands himself into every universe like that. And because, you know, he's in charge of Maya, He's in charge of ignorance or illusion. Therefore, uh, he, when, when Maya expands in the different universes, Shiva also expands. So it's the same person, not like Brahma, it's a different person. Right. Brahma is, a, is usually a jiva. Now sometimes, if there's no qualified uh, jiva in a particular universe, then the Lord himself will expand as Lord Brahma. But in our particular universe, uh, the Lord Brahma is a jiva soul, and he's a devotee. There are universes where the Lord Brahma is not a devotee. You wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> I don't want to live there. Uh, so uh, 
Yeah, our Lord Brahma is a nice, is a pure devotee, and he's also in the mood of conjugal love. Stated in Srimad Bhagavatam that after uh, Lord Brahma meditated for 10,000 years of the demigods, he came to the conclusion that he is the maid servant of Krishna. That was his conclusion. And so we're in the line of Lord Brahma. We're in the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. Uh, because of that, then our, our mood is primarily conjugal love of the Lord. Is this description in Srimad Bhagavatam, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva? Yes, uh, but especially it's, it's more clear in Chaitanya Charitamrita. You should read Srimad Bhagavatam first and then read Chaitanya Charitamrita. All these things are given. What's that? In the yes. The yeah, in the, uh, what is it called? Uh, cosmolog ontological cosmological overview or something like that. <laughs> ontological orientation. Ontological orientation, right. It's a, a whole review of the Vedic cosmology. So uh, you can read about this there. Any more questions? No more questions? Okay, let's sing. Finishing her prayer. Namaste, Narasim Haya. Namaste, Narasim Haya. Prahlada, Hlada, Dayine. Prahlada, Hlada, Dayine. Iranakashi. Shahadeh 